All right, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on when you're watching this video. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be working through another hypothesis test. Um, this is the exercise from slide 31. And what we're going to use this example of a hypothesis test to illustrate is well, not only the steps again, but how the conclusion from the test relates to the interval. All right, so we're using an example from lecture set number seven. So we have a simple random sample of 15 adult tarantulas, and they gave a sample mean carapace length of 17.54. And we have a normal probability plot for the sample given below. We want to know if there's evidence that the mean carapace length of adult tarantulas differs from 18 millimeters. Okay, so this is part A. So we have our assumptions. And so the first assumption is the simple random sampling assumption, right? Which is stated in the above part. Okay, the second assumption is that X bar is normal. Now we had addressed this last week as well, and we can say this is true uh, from the linear relationship in normal probability plot, right? So we can see that the points are linear and there's, they're within the bound. So this gives evidence of normality. And then on step three, we would have sigma known. And this is also true. We're told that sigma is 2.03. Okay, on step one, so we want to know if there's evidence that the adult or the mean carapace length, carapace length differs from 18.03. So the null hypothesis will be that, or sorry, from 18, will be mu equals 18 versus the alternative that mu is different from 18. Okay, So again, we use the alternative to reflect the question of interest. All right, um, and we are going to test, well, this isn't stated, but we should be using alpha equals 0 0.1. Okay, so we're using this alpha because I wanted to match up with the confidence interval, right? So this, you can also think of this as alpha equals one minus 0 0.9 from But most often, it'll be stated clearly the significance level. Right? OK, so we have sigma. So on step three, we're going to have a z score. So we'll have z is x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. So this is 17.54 minus 18.00 over 2.03 divided by the square root of 15, which is negative 0 0.88. Okay, on step four, on step four, we are um, going to take the critical value or the p-value approach. So again, for consistency, I'm going to demonstrate both approaches, um, but you don't have to use both in practice. They'll always give the same answer. So if I take the critical value approach, I start by sketching out a standard normal curve. So this is centered at zero. And then I'm going to split the area into two parts. Okay, so this is because it's a two-tailed test. So because the alternative hypothesis has a does not equal sign in it, that means that I need to use both tails of the normal curve. Okay, so this part here is now a size alpha over two, and this part here is now a size alpha over two. So we're taking that full significance level, 0 0.1, 
and we're splitting it equally into each tail, so 0 0.05. So that means that my critical value is Z alpha over two, which is Z 0 0.5. And then I have the same value, but just as a negative in the lower tail. So this thing down here will also be, will just be negative Z 0 0.05. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to go to the standard normal. Actually, the easiest way to do this is to go to the T table, scroll down to the bottom, and the bottom of the T table gives us Z 0 0.05, which is 1.645. Okay, so the upper tail critical value for this test is 1.645. And the lower tail value is simply negative 1.645. And now we take our test statistic, which is negative 0 0.88. And we mark down where that's located. And we can see that the test statistic is not in a rejection region, so we're not going to reject. Okay, if we take the p value approach, What I'm going to do here is mark down where my test statistic is. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to mark down the same value, but on the positive side. So I'll have Z 0 0.88. Now, because it's a two tailed test, okay, this means that my P value is going to be the total of both of these areas. Okay, so the p-value is the sum of these two parts. So the p-value is the probability z is less than negative 0 0.88 plus the probability that z is greater than 0 0.88. And this is simply two times the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.88. Now I wrote it this way on purpose because the standard normal table always gives us area to the left. So now what I can do is just look up negative 0 0.88 in my standard normal table or in the standard normal table. It's not my table. So negative 0 0.88. And that gives us 0 0.1894. Okay, so this is 2 times 0 0.1894, which is 0 0.8873. Okay, so 0 0.3788. All right. So now on step five, if I take the critical value approach, I would say, do not reject H0 since Z is outside rejection region, so Z here being my test statistic. And if I take the p-value approach, I would say do not reject H0 since the p-value is bigger than alpha. All right, and then on step six, I would say at the 10% significance level, the data do not 
provide sufficient evidence to suggest that the mean carapace length of adult tarantulas is different from 18 millimeters. All right. So that again is an example of a statistical hypothesis test. Again, you don't have to use the critical value and p-value approach. You only have to take one of them. They'll always give the same result. Okay, so how does this relate to the confidence interval? So in part B, it says, recall, we showed this in lecture set seven, that a 90% CI for mu is 16.68 to 18.4. Explain how this matches the result in A. All right, so the result in A is saying that there is no evidence to suggest that the mean length is different from 18. Okay, so this is saying that there is evidence that 18 could be the mean carapace length. So 18 is a possible value. The interval runs from 16.68 to 18.4. So the interval includes 18. So therefore, the interval is saying that 18 is a possible value, and the hypothesis test is saying that 18 is a possible value. Hence, the results are the same. Okay, so since eighteen is included in the interval and the test gives no evidence that mu is not 18, both procedures agree that mu equals 18 is a possible value for mu. Okay. And I'll actually, I'll just say for the mean. All right. So essentially, in this question, again, because we are not rejecting the null, we are saying there is no evidence that mu equals 18 isn't possible. Right. And the confidence interval includes the number 18. So 18 is between the lower and the upper bound, which is giving the same conclusion that 18 is a possible value for mu. So that's how they agree. All right, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.